This is Rob Turbin for Boxing Social. Real privilege to be joined here today by former WBA World Super Middleweight Champion George Groves. George, first and foremost, congratulations on a magnificent career. Happy retirement. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. It's very nice of you. Um, it's, it's, nice to, it's nice to retire. <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been um, in your mind? I've just spoken to Shane. I won't tell you what Shane said. Why don't you tell me what you said? Well, I think... I mean, Shane realised when I didn't get up in Jeddo for <laughs> well, I, I think we call it a day here, shall we? But, um, yeah, no. Uh, so, you know, I, it's difficult, you know. I, I've known for a while that, you know, and, and certainly once I'd lost in, in Jeddo, I knew, well, well, that's it, I'm finished now, you know, like. And not because I'm washed up and finished, because I actually want to leave with this still a bit left on the table, like maybe even, you know, but, oh, that's a good decision, that's a logical decision, but he could have done this or done that. Um, that that idea had always always appealed to me. Um, like I said in my sort of statement, I've, um, uh, you know, I know the severity of, of, the, of, the, of the sport I'm involved in and, and the uh, the effects it can have and the, the you know, the, the dangers that, that it poses. And, um, after my fight with, with Eddie Goodnight, um, which was, was I think the end of 2016, um, you know, I knew sort of my days were, were numbered as such, and then uh, and I was going to stay 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 in the sport sort of as long as it felt necessary. Um, I still had to to win a world title. That was that was a be or end all, and um, and then ideally would like to leave the sport, you know, with a few quid in the bank and pay my debt, and you know, be in a stable position to. Um, try my hand at something else, you know. Uh, so, yeah, next fight, beat you off, it's one off. I'm sure I earned a few quid. <laughs> Win the tournament, which which done the job, and uh, win, lose, or draw that tournament, I was 99% sure that that was going to be it. And ideal, idyllically, it would have been to leave, um, you know, as number one division, ring magazine champion, you know, world champion, tournament winner, uh, sail off into the sunset. Worst case scenario, uh, indulge my James Gale fantasy and fight at Wembley Stadium. Maybe have a win at Wembley Stadium for once, you know, in the following the following summer. But the likelihood of that was that, would, that deal would never get done, and that was what I was going to always do. Um, obviously, uh, I'm leaving the sport, you know, not 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 on a win, uh, on a loss, which is not not perfect. But um, I know now through through, through years of being involved in the sport that you can't always be the way you want it to be but I still believe I'm leaving you know on the highest stage on the biggest stage you know at the highest level um, I'll be it on a, on a loss but um, I'd much rather that than anything else so uh, yeah I feel now as I've got a young family at home I feel like now's the right time for me to uh, spend some more quality time with them and also I wonder if he asked to get, get stuck in something else indulge my creative side maybe and see if there's anything else that uh, I could be good at uh, become a be, be, be extremely good at so uh, we'll see how we go. I read the statement and it, it mentioned kind of your future and just spoken to Shane about you potentially looking after fighters and obviously motivational speaking, which isn't something that that immediately quite when I looked at it sort of surprised me a little bit. Just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm not very motivational most of the time. I'm <laughs> very very miserable and dull as for Solomon though. Yeah, so um, usually like beasting or badgering people about their lives rather than uh, encouraging them to do good things. But no, I think you're going to find a new me. You know, I'm having some carbs from time to time, you know. I'm not always in a depleted calorie diet, so uh, always having to make weight. But no, um, you know, I, it's, it's something that uh, I, I love the idea of. I, I, I think at the moment I've got a good story. You know, I need to develop that good story into a good message and, you know, hopefully that is something that is inspiring, that is, that is motivational. And, uh, you know, I've been, I've been booked already for a few gigs. I've sort of, it's something that if I'm going to do it, I want to do it well. So I've been putting some some time into it, and um, I believe there's, a, you know, I, I can deliver a good product here. You know, there's, there's something something to be said about what I've been through, and the first hand experiences I've got. So um, yeah, I think uh, that, that that might be my next. Hopefully, that'll be my next calling. You know. You mentioned um, you can eat some carbs now. You're somebody who certainly for the last... You've always been big at super middleweight, but certainly for the last couple of years, it's kind of been, look at George on the scales. Have, did you see him on the scales? How much of an issue was making weight for the Callum Smith fight? <laughs> I feel like you spoke to Shane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 
was uh, it was hard. It was very hard. Um, yeah. Uh, no, um, we had to change the training realm. It was a totally different camp because I had to fit in a lot more rehab sessions, which weren't sessions that my body was used to and therefore didn't have an effect on the weight making. So I start off very heavy. I take off weight periodically, um, just naturally through getting in shape, um, losing excess body fat. Usually, you develop a bit of muscle um, after you know midway through camp. Uh, that's what makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, ready, ready, get down to a specific weight, fight. Um, this time I had to factor in additional sessions because I had um, rehab sessions for the shoulder, which um, were far more intense than I actually uh, realised they would be. You know, they are. It was physically, but more so mentally exhausted. You know, uh, trying to engage your tricep. Okay. No, it's not engaged. Engage tricep. So I'm trying to train my brain to tell my bice, uh, my tricep to wake up when it, it just wouldn't. So you do specific tricep exercises and it still wouldn't um, engage. And my <laughs> fellow I work with who's a genius, um, who touched, oh, lost my rehab, will keep me a real rollicking for, for going into semi-specific details about stuff we were doing. But, you know, he brought me back from the brink when I met him. We had a fight, that's, a fight date already set, so um, you know, it lets you know how... Sort of how far out we were, and I couldn't really lift my arm above my head. Um, he got me in a position where I could fight, you know, and uh, I, I am a, a world of gratitude for that. But um, yeah, it was it was hard, and making weight was as always hard, probably harder than ever for that fight. You need to confirm more than I. Whether I've spoken to Shane about that, <laughs> um, it's it's difficult to kind of to to pick a, a starting point, not a starting point, but pick points throughout your career because so much has happened in such a still quite short space of time. You're still a young man. Um, the Frotch fights will always be talked about, will always be remembered. What are your overriding feelings of, of kind of both fights? Obviously the first fight, you sensational, controversial stoppage, second fight, knocked out. What are your kind of overriding feelings of, of not just the fights but the whole build-up and the rivalry with Carl Frotch? I think... Uh I enjoyed I enjoyed the rivalry. I still enjoy the rivalry. I think everyone who got involved with it enjoyed the rivalry. Um, I think it was good for boxing. Um, you know, as 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 time has sort of gone on, um, I can put I can put put to bed, be at be at peace with with the both fights, both losses. Um, you know, and not worry so much about the what ifs. Because um, ultimately it worked out for me in the end, and everything maybe for a reason, you know. So uh, you know it wasn't it wasn't ideal. I'd rather have lost on points at Wembley <laughs> instead of getting knocked out, you know. And my my path would have been the same, but just not so, you know, not so memeified, you know. Maybe not so much out in on in on a Barcelona and ambulance sort of job, you know. But um, you know, it, I think it definitely shaped my path, made me who I was. Um, made me a uh, more in-depth um, human being uh, and now you know talking about extracurricular work life after boxing as a fighter you know I'm, I you know I've got my manager's license I've self-managed for the last five six years and I've done in my opinion an exceptional job at that which so you know I'm going to be indulging that a little bit more now and, and being involved with um, the you know Wasserman who, who manage fighters as well so you know, I feel like I can impart a bit of a Maybe wisdom, maybe uh, just first-hand experience, maybe even some inspiration into some some fighters who come through and let them know my experiences and where I went wrong, how they can learn from my mistakes, and ultimately where they can be creative and uh, and go on and uh, do great things for themselves and achieve their goals, gain their success, become world champions. Now you mentioned how kind of the Frotch fights shaped you, made you more in depth. How long was it before you kind of realised that? Because coming back from the defeat, you were still you were back in the ring very very quickly, and it was kind of like you were jumping back on the horse. When did you kind of realise and accept the the what had happened in those two frotch fights and allow it to kind of change you? Well, who knows? You know, like what you feel like you know now, you don't always know uh, at the time. You know, change of mind as time goes on. You know, a bit of hindsight, a bit of perspective, a bit of. Um, wisdom, you know, experience, all these different things, uh, 
play a play a factor. I feel like maybe after even definitely after the first fight, I thought I was a world champion without a belt. Second fight, I thought oh, I should be world champion, but I fucked this up. <laughs> so let's just rush back and get it, get it done. And then when I didn't win one for a third time, and this was purely my fault because I put faith in the wrong people. I'd listened to the wrong you know listened at the wrong times. So I'd uh, you know I'd blown it myself. Um, losing a, a split away from home, you know, against someone who, you know, it turned out to be a very good fighter, but at the time he wasn't getting much credit. So it was time to okay, well, let's just reassess. You know, let's just start over a little bit more, uh, more uh, methodically, and and um, really uh, take our time, basically. But there is no time in boxing, you know, as you say. Like uh, as I say. I think I fought Barry Jack in September and I was out again in January, you know. By the time I met Shane, we, from the time of meeting Shane and fighting our first fight together, I think it was less than two months. So, it's it's, it's, it's a hustle, it's, it's, it's it comes at you thick and fast, you've got to slip and slide, you got to, uh, you got to do what you got to do. But uh, I think maybe, maybe then, then I started to really rationalise and process, you know, that, you know, Put, let's put them to bed. You know, we can cancel them out. You win a world title, and then they can be forgotten about. You know, because they are what they are now. And they can't be changed. Um, and then yeah, so from winning a world title, when whew, that weight was lifted off my shoulder, that was fine. That burden was finally uh, achieved. You know, uh, across the line. And since then, uh, it's been more and more of that process, you know. And I'm, I'm lucky, you know, I've been fortunate since the shooting off fire, I've been involved in big fights, I've had some good money, I've had some fun times, you know, uh, I've had some tough times, you know, <laughs> had a couple of injuries along the way as well, but um, I can leave the sport now very happy, content, um, excited about the future, so uh, it's good for me. I mentioned earlier on your, your statement, um, mentioned a lot of people in there, no mention of Adam Booth. Why was that? Huh. Uh, well, well, I, I, I started saying, I want to thank some people, and I didn't want to do a, a big long list of people, because it's quite boring, but people don't know who these people are. But I want to thank the people that, um, that I feel deserve thanking, people who put my needs above their own, you know, who, uh, you know, yeah. I can't remember exactly how I put it, but that's what I put in the same way. They put their, put their needs above my own. You know, they only ever had my best interests at heart. That was all they really cared about. Um, Adam was a, uh, a great coach when he, when he when he was a great coach um, to me, and uh, I did made a cut. <laughs> he did made a cut. He didn't deserve thanking, to be honest, for my part. You know, I'm sure he don't care. So might be a bit peculiar for a few people. Might be a bit. Some people might think that, you know, whatever, but there's a, uh, is what it is, you know, that's why I'm sure he wouldn't thank me in his, his retirement speech either. I wasn't sure whether or not to bring this up, but Shane actually mentioned it first. Uh, Carl Froch, we've mentioned him already in this. Wasn't sure whether or not to bring this up because this is about you, but the comments that he's made about your retirement, does that, it kind of leads back to what we were talking about earlier on in the interview. Do you feel that like you've kind of handled the Frotch Groves saga better than he has, even though he's the one with the wins? Yeah, God knows, man. Like, um, <coughs> I think I made him a, I think I made him eight, is it, I think I count the noughts, but I think it's eight, an eight figure payday out of our last two fights. He's done exceptionally well. We should, we should, uh, you know, he retired making history. Chin and his nemesis spark out from 80,000 people, but um, he struggled a bit. But it's all good because Andre Ward came to my rescue <laughs> and decided to bash him on Twitter. I said, Man, get a grip. So, um, yeah, you know, I think I, I, I like that about Frotch that he shoots from the hip. Even though he's a very clever man, he's not stupid. Does does things that he obviously has to backtrack on, whether he wants to or not. Uh, but all good, all good, you know. It only made me laugh. <laughs> only made me laugh. Um, he got a lot of stick for what he said about me, I say. So, um, but he, he probably wishes he didn't do that, but at the same time, he's he's proud that he did do it, you know. And uh, I appreciate that from him. Uh, Frotch grows free in the pipeline? 
not in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. Um, so uh, yeah, no. Um, no. <laughs> nah. They're in a stadium big enough for it, is there? Jesus. Oh God. Not for France. I, I, I think he likes me. I don't think he wants to fight me anyway. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask him next time I see him. Um, you have to get out of here. You've, you've been um, very, very generous with your time, as you have been throughout your career. Um, with you retiring goes the last fighter I'm a fan of. Um, so watch out, rest <laughs> of the fans. Uh, of rest of the fighters, rather. Um, George Grove, has been an absolute pleasure to cover your career from afar as a fan and then working in boxing. Congratulations on your career. Uh, you did it your way throughout, which I think is, is all any fighter can really ask for. Um, congratulations, George Groves. Thank you. That is lovely. Thank you very much. Who, who, who else are you a fan of? <laughs> <laughs>